Hello everyone, Mushmouth Joe here. Today I want to talk about the Daryl Brooks trial. He has a long list of previous violent crimes and a history of not showing up for court. This is the arraignment hearing after the Christmas parade massacre. Uh, in reviewing the criminal complaint, the allegations are such that I read that two detectives opined that this was an intentional act, that the uh, vehicle seemed to swerve into, uh, into <coughs> individuals, actually at one point trying to avoid other vehicles, uh, that the detectives, they're listed as Detective Casey and Detective Chusoni, who again opined that the actions they observed in their opinion uh, were intentional. Uh, we now have five. I mean, Attorney Opper informed us of a sixth, but that's not here before us today. Five people that are deceased. Uh, we have a gentleman that has a huge background uh, via uh, multiple states. Just going through some of the Wisconsin uh, cases, they're violent. We have substantial battery, DC, uh, strangulation, suffocation, resisting. Pending cases, which the statute uh, I just read references that I should consider second degree um, reckless endangering safety while armed, fell into possession of a firearm. Attorney Opera told me that the gun apparently was a stolen handgun. Those are allegations. He's out on bail on that. Also out on bail on the Milwaukee case ending 4596, where he's charged with second-degree reckless endangering safety, disorderly conduct and battery, uh, and resisting. Uh, and then we get into Nevada, battery, the, the domestic violence, the sexual assault, the sex offender registration violation, and then the battery in Georgia. While out on bail on two rather significant allegations, we are now faced with uh, five counts of first degree intentional homicide. Milwaukee County case talks about, as Attorney Opper indicated, you using a vehicle to run over another person with, their ve with your vehicle. So you don't respond well to what is common sense within our community, our society. The nature of this offense is shocking. Uh, actually, the detail I was not expecting here today that two, two detectives, not lay people, detectives, uh, not only tried to stop this, but rendered an opinion that this was an intentional act. You're presumed innocent, sir, uh, but that's what the allegations are. Um, and I've not seen anything like this in my very long career. Um, so I know that that's extraordinarily high bail. Uh, it's warranted here, and I am setting cash bail in the amount of $5 million. When the pre-trial hearings began, Brooks decided he wanted to represent himself. He proved to be mentally competent by multiple experts, so the request was granted. You are discharged and uh, certainly are excused from the remainder of this hearing. This set off a chain of events that not only sealed his conviction, but it also gave him the ability to continue his acts of destruction upon the city of Waukesha. The public defenders handed their entire case over to Brooks, who decided to subpoena every witness that got left off the list of subpoenas for the state. He must have thought those people were excused because they had testimony of exculpatory evidence. But there really was no exculpatory evidence to speak of. This caused Brooks to get angry and take it out on the witnesses. Many of them were still mourning lost loved ones due to Brooks running over them in his Ford Escape. And Brooks preys on the vulnerable, so it was like serving raw meat to a hungry lion. And you stated that after you were struck, you got up and ran to your daughter, correct? Yes. 
and you were able to do that with your leg injury? Yes. I guess that would be the adrenaline going through your body at that moment in time. It did give me the strength to run to my daughter. When did that pain in your leg set in? It was immediately. But you were still able to get up and run? Yeah. And did you... Were you able to see uh, what the vehicle did after you were struck? No, my only attention at that point in time was to find my daughter and attend to my daughter. You did not see what happened to your daughter? I still to this day don't know directly what happened to my daughter. I just know that she was hit by the red vehicle as I was laying on the ground after I was hit. Would it be fair to say that it was difficult to see if anyone else was struck? From the position I was in, I seen a tire going in front of me. So no, I did not see directly anywhere besides the tire going in front of my face. So it would be fair to say that you didn't see anyone get struck besides yourself? Any idea what may have stopped you from being able to see what happened? Because I blacked out. At the point that you blacked out, at that point you didn't see anyone struck. Would that be fair to say? I don't remember exactly the vehicle hitting, but I just remember bodies flying. I think I kind of try to block it out. By how long would you approximate you watch the travel of the vehicle after it had passed you? I didn't watch the vehicle after it went past me. I was looking at the dancers on the ground. I'm glad they got the conviction. But the cost was too high, in my opinion. And I think Judge Jennifer Doro did an excellent job patting him on the head when he was a good boy. Mr. Brooks, I want to commend you for a couple of things. Number one, asking him to come back into the courtroom. I really appreciate that. I appreciate you being here. I think it runs uh, much smoother when you are here, assuming you follow all the rules, which you have done a very good job at this afternoon. I also want to commend you on uh, cooperating with the process even before you were uh, brought over here. You were respectful, um, but you also made appropriate objections. You asked questions on cross-examination. Uh, despite not wanting to unmask at first, you did do that, and I appreciate that. Um, you asked some cogent, relevant questions, some of which went directly to the credibility of the witness. I would add, you might not always artfully ask the questions, but I think you're making some solid points. Um, and um, I would encourage you to keep prepping, to have questions written out based on the materials that you have. Um, but uh, I really appreciate that you came back over and that you've been following the rules. She also put him in a separate courtroom and used a mute button when he misbehaved, which I thought was sheer genius. But she bent over backwards a bit too far and set justice back a few decades. And I understand the can of worms I'm opening by saying this. I've already had my intelligence insulted repeatedly by Judge Doro fanboys from around the world. And that's just fine because I'm no legal analyst by any means, and we are all entitled to our opinions. But I have noticed that their arguments are all the same. It's always about how it was necessary to award Brooks extra accommodations to ensure a conviction with no chance of appeal and that she was worried about protests. Folks, there is no such thing as a trial with absolutely no chance of appeal. In fact, Judge Doro suggested the idea directly to Brooks repeatedly throughout the trial. Um, and they will be available for you at a later point in time should you be convicted and uh, on appeal to make whatever arguments that you uh, need to or want to regarding those. But from my And even if he was somehow able to conjure up an appeal, who would actually let this guy out of prison? Have you seen the evidence in this trial? There is footage of him at his mother's house before the parade, getting in the Ford Escape while wearing the clothes he was wearing after the massacre. 
We saw security footage of the altercation he had with his ex-girlfriend that set off the whole incident. Minutes later, he was captured on phones, security, and traffic cameras driving through the parade, killing six people and injuring over 60. They had experts prove that his brakes were fully functional and that the Ford Escape recall was not an issue for his particular vehicle. And even if it was, the recall had nothing to do with braking. After the vehicle hit so many people, it was damaged badly enough that he was unable to drive it anymore, so he ditched it. It was found in a driveway with his DNA all over the inside and the blood and clothing of his victims were found all over the outside. He was found waiting for a lift at a stranger's house. What is your name? Bruce. He has never admitted to or denied his guilt. He just claims not to be the real Daryl Brooks, despite being pointed out by every single witness who saw him. But he is indeed guilty, and everyone knows it. There is no woke mob advocating for Daryl Brooks. Instead, the woke mob is advocating for Judge Doro for putting the victims in harm's way in the name of justice. I guess it's because Daryl Brooks was able to kill and injure so many people after woke liberal cities allowed Brooks to commit violent crimes and let him back out of jail repeatedly. Come on, man. He was out on bail for purposely hitting someone with his vehicle when he massacred 70 people in Waukesha. So this is a woke leftist mess and the woke leftists want to clean it up their own woke leftist way at the expense of the victims and their families. Brooks was allowed to ridicule, abuse, and further traumatize his own victims. The state objected, and many times, the judge would overrule these very reasonable objections in favor of allowing Brooks special understanding and even giving him advice on how to rephrase his questions. Getting hit being your head at that point. Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Overruled, she may answer the question. It was a Ford SUV. And how were you able to determine the make and model of the vehicle? Objection. Did not describe the model. Grounds. Um, overruled, she may answer um, the question. So the incident that happened didn't prompt you to leave? No. Grounds. <clears throat> Overruled, he may he may answer if he understands the question. We did not want to leave right away because my son said he couldn't feel his legs and there was a woman there helping us that said he might have a back injury that we should not move him. Brooks was completely unruly. He disrespected the courtroom and the judge on multiple occasions and even made sure to be seen by the jury with a Bible and questioned the Christianity of the entire courtroom. Well, he doesn't have them on. He's looking at a book. Uh, we should stop saying a book. I'm looking at the Bible. Thank you. It's not just a book. It's the book. Can't disagree with you there, sir. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. How many people actually live by it, though? Anyway. Throughout this behavior, Judge Doro treated him like a child and even allowed him to believe he was in control at times. In the end, the trauma experienced by the victims, not only before, but during the trial as well, was the tool used to put Brooks away. I would have preferred to see the evidence do the job rather than to sacrifice the mental well-being of the victims and their families. But this is the woke leftist version of justice. You don't believe me? What if the details were exactly the same, but instead of Daryl Brooks, it was this guy? His trial was also in Wisconsin. What if it was this guy? Do we need to offer this defendant extra accommodations and understanding in this case? I think it would be as shocking to you as the Daryl Brooks trial was to me. Thanks for your time and comment below if you are interested in an edited version of the full trial that doesn't take three weeks to get through. This is Mushmouth Joe, 
signing off again. Have a great day. Don't call yourself a judge. You got no integrity whatsoever. None. True international average of pressure. You did this shit, and you couldn't even keep your mouth shut. This ain't the place for you to be doing this shit. And you still ran your mouth, bitch.